Pot Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 839, Winter is Coming. Record live on November 3rd, 2022. Hello everyone, welcome to Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Dust Storm. I'm your other co-host, Godzilla T. And we are back after a little bit of a hiatus. We took some time off for various reasons. Uh, primarily me with being away for HCS Worlds and another little vacation trip. GT holding down the fort with Frag and Fridays. But we're back. Mm-hmm. And there's a we're lot here. to talk about. The winter update coming around the corner five days away from when we're recording this podcast. Just so you know, Dust did try to get a hold of me to uh, do a short podcast on the release of the winter update, but I didn't notice the notification until two days after he sent it. <laughs> because, you know, Twitter wouldn't want to notify me that I have a direct message. <laughs> right. In any way, shape, or form. Yeah. I actually have email notifications turned on as well, so... And I didn't get anything. I just happened to open Twitter and say, oh, hey, I got a notification. What is it? Oh, well, never mind. On well, nice random tangent, uh, <laughs> a certain individual now runs Twitter. Yeah, well, we'll see. <laughs> see it can see. only get worse from here. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. We'll see what well, happens. Tec- t- technically, he's just the owner. He doesn't exactly run it. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah. See how much weight he's, he pulls. Anyways, well, we've got quite a bit of things to talk about. Um, I guess we'll go ahead and touch real quick on any Frag and Fridays that happened over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, we had a couple of those. We'll have another one tomorrow. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Now, we played Infinite the last couple of weeks. <clears throat> Didn't get a poll out last Friday. I just... I was on, I'm ready for vacation, and I was at work, so. I can understand that. I, w- I, I wasn't actually thinking. Sometimes those are the days. You just are trying to get through it as best as you can, and you don't think about anything else, and by the time you get home, it's like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to do that. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, the only thing I was looking for was 4 o'clock. <laughs> Time to clock out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Although, with the winter update coming, there are bound to be lots of changes to our Frag and Friday nights. Mm-hmm. With the Forge beta coming with this winter Could update. Could be. Could be. Yep. There definitely will be some changes in the games we play. There have there'll be some tweaks come Tuesday to the available options. And I can't say that I agree with all of them. You're talking about the playlist they, stuff or the playlist stuff. Okay. I don't know if you want to get into it now or if you want to wait till later, but no, nah, let's just go ahead and jump into it. We've got a whole bunch of things to, to talk about, so we might as well just jump in. Okay. So yeah, playlist. Well, the playlist will be changing. Mostly for the better, it's... I think. Mostly. I mean my, my personal opinion, I think. They are removing some stuff that I really don't think they need to be removing. Now I can't find a freaking. I just posted the link in the chat, too. I found it. It helps when you push the right button. That does typically help, yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) They are going to have three rotational playlists. They're going to have what they call a core rotational playlist, a social rotational playlist, and uh, what was the other one? Ranked. A ranked rotate, ro- ro- rotational playlist. Anyway, as of November 8th, these are going to be your options. Quick play, big team battle, ranked arena, Fiesta, tactical slayer, and team slayer. Those are the permanent playlists. These are the permanent playlists. You'll notice the removal of, bot, of bots and bot of... Arena. Uh, free for all. Yes. 
the bot arena, okay, fine. With the changes they're making to the challenge system, I don't see that that's going to be as much of a problem. Because really, the only reason I went into bot arena is to get weapon kills for certain weapons. Hmm. Because, you know, when you're trying to kill somebody with a mangler. Mangler. <laughs> a mangler and they have a BR, you're not going to win. No. Unless you just happen to be really lucky or really good. And I'm neither. So, anyway. Or you're, or you're playing against people that just play Halo casually and it doesn't seem like those are uh, numerous in this day and age of Halo Infinite. So, Well, I yeah. mean, it's there's just certain things that the social aspect just seemed more social in previous halo games like there were always some folks in there that were new and trying things out and this with halo infinite it looks like people are just either really good at the game or know what they're doing there's not really any of the newcomers into halo (laughs) honestly i've shied away from the social playlists for a long time in infinite so far infinite i've spent the most time in social playlists Hmm. In Halo 5, pre... Fiesta. <laughs> Pre-Fiesta. Uh, I pretty much spent most of my time in uh, free-for-all or SWAT. Oh, okay. My my personal time. Now, you know, when we were playing Dragon Fridays, we usually start in the arena style and move into big team once we got large enough. But and then the that was the only yep. time I really... Uh, that is the only real time that I did the social side of Halo. And it's been that way since late Halo 2, early Halo 3. Wow. I just got tired of the poor match quality. The matchmaking systems up until Halo 5. And I'm not saying that the rank side was a lot better, but it was manageable. It always seemed like you had an imbalance in the teams. Like when I go play between Halo social... Two and Five. No, just between the different playlists and the different games. Okay. Like when I play big team in Halo Three, I'd get low low skill players. All the high skill players would be on the other team, and I'd just get steamrolled. Hmm. Okay. Same for Halo Four. Same for Reach. So I tend I I actually quit playing the social playlists by myself because of that reason. In Halo 5 with the changes they made to True Skill, the initial changes, it made it better. I actually spent more time in the social side, but even even then when I was playing by myself, I still still hung around and ranked a lot more. And then they did True Skill 2 And that made a huge improvement in the game quality that I was getting. Uh, The teams were a lot more balanced uh, and I was having a lot more fun. So I tended to go into the social playlist more than I did before, but still I would still hang around in the rank side more than anything. And then super super fiesta came out and then that changed everything. (laughs) Right. It's like, okay, we're really, all playing Super Fiesta, woo! I mean, don't get me wrong, skill does matter in Super Fiesta, but the random luck has more to play with it than your skill. Yes. I mean, it doesn't, ma- it doesn't matter how good you are, if the other guy's got a rocket launcher, you're probably going to die. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it just, that's the way it works. Yeah, and sometimes that randomness is laid back there's been other times where it's been just super sweaty and it's like well this was not fun mm-hmm. basically if the other team had a whole bunch of spanker primes yeah. or sniper rifles an answer an, an answer, answer. an orfang you know it, it the balance the balance of the match was determined by what who got what weapons yeah in 90 percent of the games so you know that i i can't fault that because that's just dumb luck yeah anyway i am sad to see that they removed the free-for-all playlist and i've heard people say well they should have just let people search with with groups no bungie did that and it was a 
bad idea. <laughs> they didn't do it for all other games, right? Just well, well you couldn't do had... you couldn't do it in three. Yeah, you could. Mm-mm. Oh, sorry, no, three. You couldn't. That's right. You could do it in, in I think two. Or... And right. You could do it in Reach. Could you do it in Reach? I believe so. Okay. Anyway, there is uh, a reason they make you search by yourself. Because people will abuse the fact that they can go in with lobbies. The possibility is there. No, it's not a possibility. It's a fact. Because I've seen it happen. And those people are still out there. There's a whole new batch of those people out there. <laughs> Just look at the Halo community as it is now. There are people out there, the cry, whiny jerks. Those are the ones that go in there and do that kind of stuff and uh, free for all. To ruin everyone else's day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they'll go in there with a four stack and they'll decide, okay, we're going to pick on him. So now instead of, you know, having eight people fighting eight people, you have four people fighting one person, killing three others. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the, it defeats the whole purpose of free for all. Yeah. So anybody that says they should allow groups into rumble or free for all. Yeah. No, uh, there is no way to police that, especially with the current reporting systems. And even in the past reporting systems, there was no real good way to report that. So, yeah, I am sad to see free for all go. It is part of the rotation. So it It will be coming around. Speaking of which, starting on November 8th, the schedule. Yes, the schedule real quick. Now, each each one of these goes for for the for the subscription. 28 months. Woohoo! 28 months. You're due for another uh, podcast guest host appearance at some point. So we'll get you on soon. But yeah. Anyway, sorry. Back to the schedule. For only $99.95. Anyway. <laughs> it looks like the rotations are going to run about two weeks. We've got our for Tuesday, November 8th till the 21st. We're going to have Covey one fl- or Covert One Flag. I don't know why I keep saying Covey. Covert One Flag. I mean, it flag. starts out the same, so. Yeah. Yeah. Social Slayer and Ranked Survivor. That will be our first three rotational playlists. Again, that runs from November 8th till the 21st. On the well, 22nd. So, uh, the social rotation will play changes on the 15th. Oh, sorry. Yes, it does change on the 15th. Uh, on the 15th, uh, we go from Social Slayer to <laughs> Social Slayer to Rumble Pit. So we get Social Social Slayer for a week, and then we get Rumble Pit for the second week. On the 22nd, Rumble Pit stays. We get Team Survivor and Ranked Doubles. Mm-hmm. And that runs... Uh, that stays two until weeks. the 29th. On 29th, we get Social Skirmish in place of Rumble Pit. And then that's as far as their current schedule goes. They do have a December and schedule. They do? Yeah. Just scroll down. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so back on... Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, we got uh, the 26th core and ranked changes again. So for more information, I'd check out the website and they have both uh, the two months up. Uh, On December 20th is when the winter contingency event starts. And it looks like it runs till the 31st. Uh, It'll run at least two weeks. So at least run it through January. Okay. Well, they... It'll be at least till the 31st. So, right. Yeah. It's at least two weeks. They've got, yeah, every two weeks, rotational core and ranked changes out together. And then social rotational is on the off week. Any event playlist will have its own separate playlist that doesn't take over any of the other playlist slots. And then, as far as the 
team survivors, that's going to be things like uh, attrition and elimination. That's what kind of game modes you'll see in in there. So overall, I'm kind of happy with the rotational playlist idea. They yes. bring up a lot of the facts that from previous Halo titles that they've had rotational playlist has been a way to keep things uh, kind of fresh and going with it the two week cadence that they've done with Halo Five and the Master Chief Collection. <coughs> it's a good way to make things fresh, and they've also said that it's a way for them to introduce new things into those playlists as mm -hmm. we get forge out we get new game modes new maps so with those rotations they have two weeks to work new things into that playlist and improve that playlist every time it comes out it makes it a lot easier for them to bring in new content for us you know with this constant rotation yeah uh, because they you know they can work on it in the background and then they can slip it in on just a weekly rotation or bi-weekly depending on which category it falls into. So can't wait to see what Forge comes up with. Eighth man. They 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 gave the announcement today of hey get your files ready. Because every everyone that's been in the Forge the Forge Council, all their maps that they've been making are gonna transfer over mm -hmm. on the eighth. So all of this stuff that the Forgers have been working on, once the eighth drops out, there's gonna be a whole slew of custom games, new maps to play on, different experiences, different type of just like this is going beyond just customs and maps. This is now with scripting and everything, there are whole experiences that people are gonna be oh, creating yeah. within Forge. My mm -hmm. my first Forge thing I wanna do, and i I was actually talking to Sketch about it, and he's kind of keen on what I might be able to make of it is some kind of game show type stage where I can introduce scripting elements that can like if you were to do think of Wheel of Fortune being able to spin a wheel mm -hmm. and get values or do a family feud style thing or do something mm -hmm. like who wants to be a millionaire something like that in yeah. Forge I think would be great it would take me several months to do it probably but if I can get the basics down of the scripting and the interactive elements, then I can just have a forger come in and say, hey, can you make this pretty, please? <laughs> just touching on their last video. Mm -hmm. Very happy with the video, except for one part. Which the video are you talking show. about? The last video in the series where they were actually talking about the... The forge uh, stuff? The Yeah, the last forge video. Yeah. They never showed how your bookmarks are stored. In other words, they mm. never browsed, browsed the bookmarked map. So I have no idea what the organization of that is. I if, was if, really hope I was really hoping to see that. I, th I believe I can say this. It's very similar to Halo five. It's not exactly the same, but it's like got I a said, lot of similar I, features until I see it. The problem is it had no features. <laughs> so if Infinite has features, that's an upgrade. As far as like tagging, being able to search, that kind of stuff. I would just like to be able to put them in an alphabetical order. That's it. Like I said, I was really hoping that they would show that. I'm not that saying in anything. I'm not saying anything. I just wish they would have shown it in that video because I was really keen on seeing what that part of the menus was going to look like. Sure. I wanted well, to see the layout of those. So, and I'm then doing a little I, podcast I also, with Iron Ironwolf tomorrow that we're recording to release on Tuesday. So we'll probably talk about that. And once it drops on Tuesday, we'll have more details for y'all. <laughs> the other thing I wish they would have shown is the web interface. Hmm. Yeah, because that that would be a huge, at least for Forge Hub and those other like Forge communities. That's going to be a big thing to share maps and really draw the whole custom game night environment. Really bring that together is that web interface. The one thing I have to say is I am not happy with how three four three has done the web interface since they've taken over. Yeah, it's very mobile. I do not like Halo Waypoint. I just, I don't like, A, I don't like the fact that they had to take down the older file share shares, which 
I think, is bull. They didn't have to. Like I said, they had to take down the older file shares uh, because of security concerns. It's it's privacy concerns, not security concerns. Or privacy concerns. Okay, fine. Whatever. Yeah, I know. It's stupid legal stuff. If the owner of the map placed it in their file share to be shared, then it's not a problem. It's other things, which is kind of silly, but they it's, can it's police legal. That stuff. They can they can police that stuff separately. They just didn't want to invest the time in doing it. No, there, there's, 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 there's reasons, ways, and it's silly. I know that I know there's reasons, and I know they're stupid. <laughs> it's kind of like the <laughs> shit I have to do at work. I have to put a stupid little <laughs> sticker on a box because some idiot cut himself when he opened the, opened the box. And anytime anybody ever sees a warning sticker on a box telling you that something bad's inside, guess what? Some stupid person did exactly what that sticker was warning. Yeah. In my opinion, this particular person... Uh, the judge should have took all away his tools and made him take his cars to a shop to get fixed. I'm sorry. It's let's move on. (laughs) Anyway, I understand the legal. They could have worked it out. They have the ability to work it out. Well, they're, they're still working things. It didn't, it didn't. So it's a mute moot point. Anyway, the, the file share on the web website, it needs to have a very good search algorithm. It needs to be actually be able to load when you click on the freaking links. If it, if it, you know, if you have an external link, that's one of the big problems. Halo five share ad. Most times it wouldn't even load the, uh, load the bookmark correctly. Or whatever you want to, the web page, right? Uh, it would all, it, every well refresh it or modify the URL string, and some yeah. people didn't you didn't always know how to copy it right, and you had to click the button and then click the link in the button. You can't just right click and yeah. Anyways, <coughs> anyway, the overall like layout of the site though is share lacking. link button on the web page that you generate when you upload something would be nice. Just. Click the little box that says copy link, paste that wherever you're going to paste it. But eh, the, that might be asking too much. It is Microsoft. <laughs> anyway, um, those are the two things I was really hoping to see in that video that I did not get to see. On to more current stuff. On more current stuff. We've got two new maps along with a new mode coming in. I think most mm-hmm. people have seen these maps. If you were at the uh, Halo World Championship, or if you watch the community stage stream uh, at noon Pacific on Friday and Saturday, then you would have seen the community play date actually play on these two maps. Mm -hmm. Both of them were made completely in Forge. The first one is a symmetrical map called Argyle. This is meant to be resembling of narrow corridors on a UNSC vessel. And then the second map is called Detachment, also fully made in Forge. And this one's supposed to be a rejuvenated or revived UNSC research facility. And they look awesome. They do. I can't wait to play on them. They play really good. I didn't get a chance to play on them, but from the gameplay that I saw, they look like a lot of fun. Even 2v2, which is what they were doing during the community play dates. But the 2v2s were, were fun to watch. Good. Lots of good action. And then for Covert One Flag, this is the game variant. We talked briefly about this where one side has one particular set of layouts to be a little bit more stealthy and the other side has a different kind of layout to be a little bit more defensive. Loadout. Yeah, loadout. What did I say? Layout. Oh, loadout. Thank you. So I believe the attackers have active camo, pulse carbines, and something else. Sword. Sword. And the defending team has threat sensors, manglers, and commandos? Something I like that? Don't remember. I don't remember now. The main difference being the attackers have 
camo. The defenders have threat sensors. Interesting to see how it'll play out. Not so sure how I feel about the game mode in general. So I, I am going to try it to see how it plays, but I'll either like this one or I will really not like this one. It will take some getting used to. Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to kind of have to figure out how to balance both sides. You know what? This seems what, a little experimental. Well, yeah, it is. We as players are going to have to experiment on different techniques in using the threat sensor and using the active camo. Being sneaky. Being sneaky. Sneaky. Which is hard to do with threat. With a, which is hard to do with threat sensors popping off everywhere. Uh, a lot of it has to do with how quickly the abilities regenerate. You know, how fast can they, yep. the active camo regenerate? How fast does the threat sensor uh, regenerate? I vote every 30 seconds. Like I said, it, it, it really does depend on that balancing. It does. So it'll be interesting to see. I will definitely try it out. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to like it, but I don't know that I'm going to hate it either. I feel exactly the same way. Time will tell. That's all we got. Uh, next up on the docket, let's talk about match XP and progression. It looks interesting. Yeah. Um, I think it's I a step like in the right how- direction. Yeah, I, well, I'm going to hold my opinion until after I experience it. It does look like it's going the correct direction. I'd be kind of interested, along with the match XP, they are changing challenges. They are. So the challenges are going to be a lot more generic. Yep, playlist agnostic. You'll able, yes, you'll be able to pl- do them in any playlist. Um, Which I'm not sure the, if I am like entirely on board with that, because I think... Take MCC, for example. There's a challenge in there that's comp- earn objective medals. Yeah. So that's not something you can get in every playlist, but it's one that you can get on in a variety of playlists. Correct. So I think to make the step all the way to you can get a challenge completed in any playlist might be a little overstepping it, but I think moving away from at least one playlist. Well, it depends on what the challenges are. If the challenges are get 10 assault rifle kills, you can do that pretty much any playlist, provided yeah. you have an assault rifle. Same for a sidekick or a bulldog. Or I mean, I think a challenge like earn 10 objective medals isn't a bad challenge. No, it's not a bad challenge, but the idea behind this is to stop forcing players in a playlist that they don't want to play. Yeah. And that's... That's always been kind of my pet peeve with it. I, you know, I'd start up Halo and I'd wind up with four Rumble Pit Channel challenges. And it's a game night. I'm not going to stop and go play Rumble to complete these challenges in the middle of game night. So I make no progression there. And that that happens quite often. Even when I'm playing, you know, I might not be in a mood to play Rumble Pit. Or SWAT, or, you know, maybe I just want to jump in and play Fiesta. Yeah. Something Overwatch has done with their challenges is for the the weekly and the daily and even for the Halloween event that they just had, they have certain challenges where it is complete a certain amount of challenges to earn this challenge. And I wonder Mm -hmm. if doing something like, okay, so right now they have it where the ultimate capstone thing unlocks after 10 challenges they're dropping it from 20 right down to 10, to 10 with this update but what if you leave the first 10 or the stack the majority of the first ones where they are totally playlist playlist agnostic but make it a full 20 make the capstone 10 and then have those extra challenges so if people want to earn the extra xp to go towards their battle pass they can go towards those things that are a tad more targeted, not fully targeted. Like I think, like Pins was saying, a specific weapon in a specific playlist. Like obviously that's. Well, I think that's what they're trying to do is balance the match XP with the challenge XP. In other words, they want you to be able to complete the battle pass either way. 
by doing your challenges or just playing the game and passively completing your challenges. I think they're just trying to make... Because I even think for like the Winter Contingency event, it makes sense to have challenges that are specific to that event because it's a featured event. So I, I, that's the other side of it. With I think I think the there's a middle ground. Yeah, with the way things are currently, you have regular challenges matched max, mixed in with event challenges. They need to be separate. If they're gonna have I agree. a play. Playlist specific set of challenges, then they need a playlist specific hopper for those challenges. They shouldn't be intermixed with your existing challenges. It should just be a separate challenge menu. Fortnite but does that. This, Overwatch does that. They're but like, with this change, the nice thing with the intermixed challenges, this is the upside. You'll be able to complete the standard challenges while being in the playlist working on the event specific challenges. But I mean, you don't even need to have the mix to do that. You just have, I I, I know I just, with the current system, I'm just talking about what we know we have. Gotcha. What we have on November 8th, who f- knows? Cause we ain't there yet, but <laughs> It, we don't know what is going to happen on November 8th when it comes to challenges, other than they're not going to be playlist specific. We don't know what's going to happen when the next event shows up, if it's going to have a separate hopper or if it's going to be intermixed like it is now. So we just got to go with what we've got. The valid point. The plus side with having a non-specific playlist challenge is you can play the event playlist and still work on all of your challenges. Yes. True. Very true. That's a good point to see what happens in December for the winter event. So it looks like for at least arena, there is a match complete XP reward of 150 XP. If you're in the top 50% of your team, you get an additional 50 if you're on the winning team, you get 50. And if you're MVP, you get 50. So you have a potential of 300 XP per arena match with a guarantee of at least 150. And I'm guessing, don't remember if I read this in here. I don't remember reading it, but I'm guessing this will replace the per match challenge that's currently in the system. I would imagine this replaces that. Probably, yes. You pro- we probably won't get the uh, challenge of complete a game. Right. I, w- I wouldn't imagine so anymore. Well, I mean, if they're going to give you per match XP, then that makes that other one obsolete. Right. The nice thing is, is you get a minimum of 150 per, per game instead of, what, 300, 200, 150, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. Right, now it's a guaranteed 150 for every single arena game. The other thing that goes along with that is the changes to CSR. Yes. They are changing up the way Infinite is going to match make based on CSR instead of MMR. Right. MMR is still there. The game knows it's there. But they are going to use your CSR to better match you with opponents. Certain parts of CSR are still influenced by MMR. Mm -hmm. But by and large, CSR is going to be dictated more on how well the outcome of the game is versus your individual skill. So if you're in with a team that does really well, even though your performance is maybe lower than everyone else's, like whenever GTRI are playing with Bobby, Keys, and Confel, if we do well, then our CSR will collectively go up. Mm -hmm. Since we are winning more of our matches. But for the MMR, that still changes in the background. But CSR will now be a lot more the driver of how you match in matchmaking. And they're also going to be making it more visible to you. Yes. So you can see where you are. 
Although I really wish they'd have given us a screenshot of that so I can see what it looks like. Anyway. Yeah. Well, um, it's it's not coming out with the winter update. It's something that is coming down the road. It's it's not fully it's not yes. fully baked in yet. Yeah. Did they say um I've been trying to find it. I thought they had had a date they were going to implement that, but maybe they didn't. Uh, I don't recall them having a date for Oh, I could be, uh, yeah, I could... yeah. Well, okay, no, the, the date that they have is for the types of penalties and quitting stuff. Yeah. That will be two days after the update drops on November 10th. Which so, is another good thing. Yeah, they're changing the way you get penalties for quitting in a game. A couple clarification points. A disconnect of any kind, whether it's a game client connection issue or a network issue, still counts as a quit because mm -hmm. let's face it there's ways to if you the the example they used if someone's not playing well they can basically just pull the cable out of their box and it's a just look oh at i the had a network problem history of halo multiplayer yeah it's there uh people are not opposed to pulling their network cables out no if they're not having a good game or they're losing a game the good news is, is that once one person quits, the penalty for everyone else reduced. is significantly reduced. So instead of losing 15 points off your CSR, you lose 10. Five. No, it changes by five. That's plus or minus by five. It's still, oh, it's 10. Plus, sorry, plus, plus or minus by five. Never mind. I misread that. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a, that's a range. As far as like mm -hmm. how much you win in an actual completed game as far as CSR. But right. yeah, uh, based on the outcome of the game, if there is a quitter, the, qu the first quitter will automatically lose 15 CSR points right off the back. Depending on how the rest of the game goes. And, and that player will be flagged. Yeah, and, and there's a certain number of flags. They don't specify how many for obvious reasons. But once you get too many flags, you are banned from matchmaking. Mm -hmm. uh, at sure. next amount of time. Yeah. The other thing is, is that if you are, as long as you're not the first person to leave, you will not receive a flag. You will receive the penalty as far as your points. CSR. But you, you still will not receive, you will not be flagged in the system. Right. And I mean, that goes for if, if someone disconnects from your party and you end up winning, you might get that full 15 CSR points. Mm -hmm. And then the losing team might only, instead of losing 15 CSR points or however many it would be for a loss, they might lose less because the teams were still imbalanced. Yeah. Uh, other offenses like cheating, team killing, going idle, other malicious activities within the game also still gets flagged regardless of quitting status mm -hmm. within the game. So that doesn't change. So if somebody quits and you want to be a jerk, they're going to flag you. With the matchmaking CSR regional stuff, they've also introduced local regions. So you can now go into your settings under gameplay. There's going to be a search region field where you can choose expanded, which is the default option, which will put your game in any server, depending on how you're matching. It'll still try to match local, but it'll, it can still get around the world. It will try to give you the best match for the game session you're in, whether you're playing by yourself or if you're with a group. Yeah. It will and try to manage the connection to be the best for all parties involved. Right. So the example they used is if, is if someone is in Australia, and someone is in Europe playing, um, if there's an even number of players in both regions, then it will centralize to Asia as the common ground between mm -hmm. those regions. Uh, with under local, that will lock you into your local region. Now, for regions that have multiple data centers like the US and Australia and Europe, you still might see changes to your ping because you're still within a region and there's multiple data centers within that region but you'll still be locked to that region. Important thing to note is the region choices that the game makes it during matchmaking is governed by the party leader. So for local, if the party leader is in a specific region, 
then everyone playing will be locked into a game in that region. So, for example, if you have three people in UK or Europe and the party leader is in US, well, all three of those players are going to be playing on US servers because the party leader is in the US. Mm -hmm. Expanded doesn't have nearly that much restriction, but it will still give preference to the party leader. Yeah, I think and that's that. My region, I think there's three data centers. In the U.S., there is five. There's two on the east. Well, depends on where they have. No, I guess there is. Well, it could two. be three. It could be three. There's at least there's at least west, central, and east for the U.S. Well, I know there's two here. There's two in central because there's one north of me and there's one south of me. Well, it's whether or not Halo is actually using both data centers. I have connected to both data centers. Okay, okay. So there, there's, I believe, a total of seven Microsoft data centers in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I believe. I think there's three east, two west, and two central, if I'm not mistaken. So take your pick. I know there's at least two in my general area that you could call a region uh, that I predominantly connect to when I'm playing by myself. Um, and it's totally subject because I'm judging that by ping. And I can tell when I connect to the one that's further away from me because I do get a definite change in ping. Well, I just found a, a Reddit article on competitive Halo. <laughs> there is San Francisco, Seattle, Boyd, Boydton, Virginia. There's two data centers there for East. That, that I don't think that's right. I think there's a separate East one. Uh, and then there's three central. There's West Des Moines, Iowa, Chicago, and San Antonio. Mm -hmm. I generally get Iowa or San Antonio. And apparently there are more data centers coming to Wyoming, Phoenix, and Georgia in 2023. They could be added for Halo. Might not be. Who knows? Well, yeah, well, that is a good, good thing. That's a good point. Halo servers may not be in, in all those locations either. Right. But at least the seven US ones, they are they are there. So I don't have a full list of servers. I was looking for that, but a quick search did not garner that information. I'm sure that there is that information somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Anyways. Uh next article. Let's go over to uh I don't know. I'd have to look up the data centers for I can just look up Azure data centers and we can take a guess on where they are. Not to get super technical. Uh, we've got sandbox balance updates. Now, this yes. article is a doozy. There's a lot of good information in here, especially if you're a competitive player. Uh, Tashi even tweeted out, hey, this is mandatory reading for all competitive players because there's a lot of changes inferred with what's going to be impacting play in Halo Infinite. So... This one we're just going to kind of go through for the most part as we look at all the different changes to weapons, to equipment, to grenades, and everything. They're tweaking. They're, they're tweaking a, a lot. So, tweaky guard. let's start with the plasma pistol. Plasma pistols in this game? Plasma pistols in this game? <laughs> Sorry. Right. So, from the dev team, many players reported that the plasma pistol was un underperforming against Spartans, especially when using the overcharged shot. To help the overcharged shot track as expected at mid to close range, we've updated its value slightly. And by slightly, they actually increased it a lot. In the winter update, we also noticed the base shot was not seeing much use, so we've increased the damage of the base shot to make it more viable option for players. Now, wait a minute. When was the base shot of a plasma pistol ever ever used halo in competitive, one in halo competitive one. halo one there is some meta i mean there is some meta around it halo one was so off there was kilter. competitive in halo one come no, on i mean as far as weapon balance they had the three shot pistol i mean come on no, i know i know anyway just saying okay other than halo one where has the plasma pistol been yeah, what has the, the main function of the plasma pistol been? Disabling vehicles. Or stripping shields. And shredding shields. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen 
anyone other than in a panic situation try to kill with a, <laughs> the standard fire mode of a plasma pistol. I'm not saying it doesn't work. It just, it's, I don't know. Anyway, hopefully with the uh, modifications, they're doing a increased base shot damage from 20 to 28. Increased charge angular velocity from 20 to 35 degrees per second. So it's going to turn sharper. In increased charge shot guided angle velocity at rest from 50 to 70 degrees per second. I think we're going to have some matrix type, sh matrix type shots. I mean, I think that might be fun. <laughs> Paint oh, yeah. Well... Paintball and Halo 4, th there was some uh, customization with the damage that happened in their pens, so I don't think that was really competitive. No. Anyways, to answer the question about Microsoft Data Centers, we've got Boynton, Virginia, North Lake, Illinois, West Des Moines, uh, Iowa, San Antonio, Texas, Quincy, Washington, Redmond, Washington, Dublin, Ireland, Middenmere, Me Netherlands, State of Sao Paulo, Brazil, Saitama, Japan, Fukushima Ward, Japan, uh, Hong Kong, which I don't think there's anything going to Hong Kong, <laughs> uh, Singapore, Aust um, Sydney, Australia, Definitely. Melbourne, Australia, oh, two Melbourne, Australias. So yeah, they're your data center. Well, at least no Xbox connections are. <laughs> yeah. Competitive, no fun, yes. Next weapon, we've got the Pulse Carbine. Even as players have gotten more proficient with the Pulse Carbine, it has not been as successful in short to mid-range as we would like. To help with this, we've updated the tracking to help it out in shorter range. To balance out its power, through, though, we'll be reducing its tracking at longer range. These changes should help... Uh, really? Okay, well. These changes should help player land shots more consistently in short to mid-range while slightly reducing the effectiveness at longer ranges. Okay, I guess that I'm, I'm still trying to figure out where the power point part of this comes from. Because <laughs> the only way I've been able to kill anybody with it is by hitting them with it. I think like that's melee. what the changes here are supposed to help with. No, they're are. trying to help balance out its power. What, at, it's short to mid, at short to mid range. Just yeah. read the tuning. <laughs> sure, <laughs> right. All right, tuning details. Increased guided angular velocity at rest from 25 to 35 degrees per second. Decreased angular velocity from 50 to 30 degrees per second. Increased target leading fraction from 0.35 to 1. Increased guided projectile error radius from 0.2 to 0.22. It's wearing a 22 degrees. <laughs> I I hope it does something for it because I haven't been able to do anything with that freaking gun at all. I I think it's going to help. I, I think the only kills I've ever got with it is because I sent hit somebody over the head with it. <laughs> yeah, this right. has piqued my interest though. The commando. One of the most common pieces of feedback we've seen is the aiming with the commando felt loose, especially at shorter range. To help mm -hmm. its, to increase its effectiveness like up close, we've slightly increased the bullet magnetism and slightly reduced the high minimum error. We've seen this help players finish off targets at closer range during initial playtests, so we're eager to see how this plays out in the wild. I totally agree with that assessment. <coughs> I don't know what it is about the commando, but it's always just, you know, it just... Yeah, at close range, yeah. As far as the details... Increased headshot, headshot prioritization angle from 0 to 0.1 degrees. So it'll increased, snap a little more. Mm -hmm. Increased bullet magnetism angle from 1.25 to 1.3 degrees. So you can be a little bit further off kilter. Uh, increased aim assist angle from 5 to 6.25 degrees. That gets you. Boop. Yep. Pull you right in. So now aim for their chest. It'll pull through the head. <laughs> Decreased minimum air angle max from 0.8 to 0.6 degrees. Nice. Not sure exactly what that means. The whole minimum air angle. Someone else smarter than me know what that means? 
<laughs> Can we get a game developer in here to tell us what all this means? Right. Be nice for them to explain, okay, what does each thing that they're about to list out mean? Yeah. What is it in plain English? I, I have to I have to say, there are literally guides out there that teach you how to aim. And most of them tell most guides, depending on the game, at least the games I play, actually tell you to aim to either the right or the left of the head or the chin. Hmm. On controller because the aim assist will pull it up to the head. That makes sense. And those particular games that have flinch, if you are not looking at the head, when you get flinched, you flinch to the head. So Good point. it works. It doesn't take you off target, it puts you on target. So if you're getting shot, aim to the right or to the left, and once you get flinched, then pull the trigger. Very hard to do. Pro strats right here. You heard it first. Yeah. <laughs> the BR. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. I, I'm, I, have, I have mixed feelings about this one. We want the BR to remain the versatile weapon we know and love, but also have noticed it's been performing a bit too well, making it not feel as rewarding as it should. In the winter update, we wanted to raise the skill ceiling on landing the final kill shot, as well as reduce its effectiveness at range from the hip. These changes should help make kills with the BR feel more rewarding. I kind of disagree. I do agree with parts of it. Yeah. The cross map shooting of the BR is insane. Yeah, that part I'm, I, I that agree I with understand. and understand. Yeah. The rest of it, I'm going to have to see how it turns out to see if it even really matters. Yeah, the shorter range is kind of where I have questions. The tuning details, headshot, headshot prioritization angle reduced from 0.25 to 0.2 degrees. Bullet magnetism angle reduced from 2.4 to 2.2. Uh, the bullet magnetism range reduced from 20 world units to 18 world units. Uh, bullet magnetism falloff range reduced from 12 world units to 10 world units. The last two, at least, I agree with. <laughs> uh, I'll have to see how it plays out once it's live. The, so the the range, the magnetism range reducing, I think I'm okay with. It's the magnetism angle that I'm a little bit more curious about. Like I said, last two, I'm okay with. The first two, mm, I have to see how it is in practice right the frag grenade this one kind of makes a little sense mm -hmm. thinking about on gameplay the frag grenade has received feedback that it is a bit too effective and <coughs> that throwing one just before dying results in easier trades than intended in order to help address these issues we have in increased the detonation time slightly the uh the only thing i have to say about that is I want to know who these people are that are pulling it off because every time I try it, my grenade disappears. <laughs> I mean, literally vanishes. Never explodes. That's probably a server. I, I watch it bounce off the ground as I'm dying and it just... Anyway, they... Yeah, I think it's probably, the... probably this desync stuff that we'll get to in a little bit. Yeah. This will give players a little bit more time to react to a grenade that has landed near them. It will also reward players for better placed grenades. Yes. We, sh we shall see. And they've just increased the detonation time by 0.2 seconds. 0.2. So, like, so you'll have to count from three to four. I mean, I think that's still a pretty significant increase. It is. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not. Because, I mean, bo most, grenade, most grenade kills can be avoided by that much. Mm-hmm. Very true. I, I don't know how many times I'm, you know, like, inches away from a corner to get around and a random grenade flies in and kills me. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next thing. Didn't even know this was a problem, by the way. I think this one's a little bit more from the competitive side of things. Like I said, I didn't even know this one was a problem. Right. 
the snap slide. Movement is always tricky to balance. We want to allow players to express their movement skills in matches, but we also don't want that movement tech to completely break maps or create unpredictable gameplay flow. For example, curb sliding and its current uses have been for fun have been fun to watch and hasn't been interrupting gameplay flow too much. On the other hand, snap sliding allows players to make jumps that could truly break the game flow. And for example, this is an example. Uh, on damn it, what's the name of that map? Which one? In indoor map, bases on either end, camo spawns in the middle, high. Riptide? Yeah. You can slide off of the center platform across the courtyard and land in the opposing team's spawn area. Wait, are you talking about Life Fire? No, not Life Fire. Riptide this the one's the, the water generator the in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Riptide. You have, you know, base, base, round platform in the middle, wings coming in. Oh no no no, that's a different one. Uh uh the Um I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, I, I can't think with it. Anyway, it allows movement from center of the map into the enemy spawn very quickly. You literally make a jump, a slide that you can't jump across even with thruster. Talking about, wait, circular, circular thing in the middle? Give me a minute. There's Aquarius, which is the one that has the greenhouse type stuff. There's Behemoth. That's the big desert one. I think it's, a, I think it's Aquarius. Let me double check. Okay. But while he's finding that, the Disruptor. The Disruptor has started to see more use as we've gotten further into Halo in this lifespan, but it still isn't doing as well as we'd hoped. To help with this, we're updating the ammo count to help players close out kills a little bit more easily. We've also spotted reports of the damage over time effect being inconsistent, and we'll be working to get an improvement out in a future update. And they're just increasing the magazine from 10 to 12. Yep. And yes, it was Aquarius. Okay. So you literally can cross the gap between camo and the enemy base without ever touching the floor. Which seems a little broken. With, yeah, it's a lot broken. Yeah. In an environment where everybody knows how to do it and knows to look for it, I can see, okay, fine. But in a if it's pulled in like a regular matchmaking section, eh, there's nobody out there looking for that. I didn't even know it existed until today. Well, I'm sure if you watch Sideways videos, you probably knew it was there. I mean, I, I'm not saying I have, but he goes like, over all the advanced like, movement mechanics stuff, which is just nuts and crazy. Yeah, like I said, it's not something. It's not something I would have even thought was possible. Right. So, where I learned about it, they said, if it's not a problem, why are you fixing it? The problem is, is it will become a problem. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So, for those in the chat, would love to hear what you have to think about all the changes. Feel free to comment in, and we'll get to them in a minute. As far as future updates, they're looking at desyncing, aiming, and more. So, PC, mouse and keyboard improvements they're looking uh, forward to. They're going to be reintroducing the red reticle on PC. And they will be monitoring it and the amount of cheats that come out using it. Yep. And if there's a lot of them, then they will drive that back and remove the red reticle mm -hmm. for a scroll wheel. They've noticed that for those that use the scroll wheel for certain actions in the game have seen some double swapping effects happening. So they are looking at some improvements to the code to address detecting of scroll wheel inputs. And then this is kind of a weird one, but oddly makes sense. They're looking at ways to introduce a walking mode for those that are using mouse and keyboard. So in the controller, you have variable walking speed because you have the stick on mouse and keyboard. You either have crouch walk or run. So they are tr looking and evaluating ways to introduce a walking speed because if you're walking, you don't show up on radar. So they want to give people on PC, especially in competitive arenas, the ability to walk if they so choose. 
we'll see how that gets implemented over time. Be interesting. Yeah. You think they'll think they'll just make like double tap W or for speed or I think that's think it may add a second key. I could see either one working. I could see the double tap W being a way to do it. I can also I see. Key, I know the keyboard manufacturers want that one because that means the W key is going to wear out faster. <laughs> I can also see a, like if you have control as your crouch, maybe, uh, well, I was going to say shift, but shift is normally help like for sprint, but I, I could, I could see some other key combination. Yeah. Like maybe caps lock, like maybe if caps lock is on, you're walking, if caps locks is off, you're sprinting or, or something like that. So I, I could see either being an option. It's just depends on what they want to go with or, or give people the option of what they want to do. Well, I'm sure it's going to, I'm sure it's going to be customizable. I mean, I doubt they would lock that down with all the customization they give you. Well, I mean, as far as if they do like it'll, with the current experience, it would either be one key plus W for the walking speed or the other way around W to walk and then another key to run. Or, I mean, we haven't seen a, a double tap button to do X action yet, yeah. but not to say that they can't add it in there. We will have to wait and see. On the desyncing improvements, one of the many discussed things about Halo Infinite across the community. There's a number of things that they have found, and all of these are actually separate desync issues. One is a true desync, where the server says you're in one place while the client says you're in a different place. Another one is blank shots. When you're firing shots at a player, they look like they're connecting, and yet nothing's happening. Another one is getting shot around walls or corners. And then the last one is ghost melees. So to address the first one about desync on blank shots, there is actually a bug where you will go go through your reload animation. It looks like from the client side, you completed it. But for some reason or another, say that you completed the reload and you did a swap of a weapon. For some reason, the server still thinks that you haven't finished your reload. So it thinks you're shooting an empty gun, even though on your game, you're actually shooting a fully reloaded weapon. So that is something that they're, um, that they're aware of. They figured it out. That's one of the first changes and fixes that they're going to be introducing towards the desync issue. Next one is the ghost melees. Now, this one, they've talked about, I think, since early on after Halo Infinite came out, they had a whole video that explained based on priority and server ticks and everything where people can cert- be and how the ghost melee effect happens and everything. Um, but they have some bugs that they've identified and improvements that they're going to be rolling out to improve that melee hit registration, which is good. As far as vehicle desync, there are some targeted improvements that they're going to make in the next update. So not this one, but when they roll out, either if they have a midwinter update update, or if they it, wait until season three, season three will have a lot of that stuff um, probably coming in the pipeline for regarding this desync issues. Uh, and that's all they had about desync so far. They're always still going through more bugs. They have several things that people still have reported. They haven't gone through yet, but these first set of issues that they're addressing should are probably some of the bigger heavy hitter ones. So that'll be nice. There are a lot more of the, the experience breaking ones. That's for sure. Yes. And for the last few things, we've got four different balance updates. First one is the drop shot. This is where they have found that people drop their weapons because it's faster than switching to a, a, your other weapon. And using that to switch your weapon and then picking up the weapon again. So Which because I of that, never even considered. I've seen it a few times. I I never did it, but I had seen that used quite a bit. Uh, honestly, I, I forget that I can drop weapons a lot of the times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
You're not unless used I'm to it. playing with well, unless I'm playing with like Bobby or Keys or somebody, and I happen to grab a sniper or a shock rifle or something, yeah, I'll go hide and say, "Hey, I've got this. You want it?" Uh, and then I'll remember that I can drop it. But right. up until a normal day to day, I don't even think about it. Yeah, I do it from time to time. Like if I have an empty weapon, I will just drop the empty weapon because sometimes I know it needs to be dropped in order for the respawn to kick off. So some t- I've done it sometimes. I've never done it to switch to another weapon quickly, but I know that's been an issue for a while. For the thruster, apparently 343 thinks that the thruster is too effective in one-on-one engagements. So they're going to be changing the effectiveness of thruster to some degree. Honestly, I've never, I've never gone up against somebody that had thruster. Ubernick made this comment about the thruster in his video, but the point that he brought up, and I kind of agree with, is if someone went out of their way to get the thruster, like, isn't the point of the thruster to kind of get an upper edge in those 1v1 battles or to duck behind cover? Like, isn't that kind of the point? Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I get the thruster from time to time, especially in Fiesta, it just, you know, randomly shows up. Honestly, most of the time I forget it's there. <laughs> But even when I remember, I don't think it's that overpowered. But again, I'm not that good with it, so. Maybe it's more on the competitive side and they see a lot of... Well, then change it for competitive. Leave it, th- leave it alone for the rest of us. We probably won't even notice the change, to be honest. I, I know I won't, because I, I, I honestly don't see people using it. I, I see it... Well, I see it used every once in a while. Not nearly as much as the grapple shot the grapple shot thank you and the repulsor well let me put it this way uh i don't see it you don't well i I know this is an unfair comparison but in halo 5 everybody used it It it's a built-in ability to thrust back and forth sure but i don't see people going out of their way to get it true i would agree with that you know, most people go for the repulsor, grapple shot, or, you know, camo, overshield, even a threat detector before they go over for the thruster. It's probably more on the competitive side then. Probably. Yeah. Like I said. Sure. Yeah. This next little tidbit ought to be interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of actually happy with this one. The energy sword. So, trades for the energy sword has typically been favoring the energy sword. So if you traded with the energy sword and the other person didn't have an energy sword, then the energy sword always won. Well, they're changing that. And now if both players have no shields and they melee each other and they both die from a certain, from the right amount of damage applied, then both people will actually trade instead of just the sword winning each time. Which, why wasn't it that way to begin with? Uh, oversight. I mean, that's something that you have to manually put in there is if this person has this weapon they will win this trade instead of just having the trade be a trade so that that's a conscious well, decision yeah. that they had to make while they were coding the game not necessarily mm, yeah you looked at you looked at the changes that they are making point one point two somebody just may have entered the wrong value i don't think so in this case but anyway i have noticed that I smack somebody with a hammer and they don't die. I, 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 don't un, I don't understand the physics on the hammer. It's like the closer they are to you, the less effective it is. The hammer is meant not as a direct on melee attack in this game. But, no, I mean, if they are physically closer to you, when you hit the ground, not hit them, hit the ground it seems it does less damage than if they were further away to a point, of course, but you know, it's like, it's like the difference between a regular hammer and Tartar's scabble. There. Yeah, there is. I I've noticed a little bit of range, play. you have to get the right distance away from them to have the most effect with the hammer. It, it's just really weird. I think for the yeah. hammer, they, they actually have it where the hit emanates from the hammer hit versus on you and i think that's even even still 
if they're right next to the hammerhead, why doesn't it kill them? That that might just be a server desync. That could be another desync issue, honestly. Could be. Could be. Because, you know, multiple times I've gone against swords with a hammer. Fiesta, you know, it happens. Sure, sure. I will slam the hammer down in the typical range that it will kill. Typical. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I'm dead from a sword lunge. And they're walking away. That might be this whole trade thing with the sword, too. I deliver the killing blow before they get to me. On your screen, it might. Like I said, I don't get the hammer. On their screen, they might have gotten the, the swing off before you swung your hammer. Yeah, like I said, I don't get the hammer. <laughs> It just, it's very finicky in the way it works. There, there's a sweet spot range. Like I said, it's very finicky in where it works. Now, sometimes it, it works just like it's supposed to. And other times, I swear it changes. <laughs> and again, it could be related to the desync. Yeah. And that could be what I'm seeing, but. Sure. Anyway. The last thing they have here is. Competitive weapon respawn timers. This one is competitive specific. They're changing the time that the weapons will regenerate and some other power weapons uh, on the map. And I kind of feel like this is probably accurate just in overall. It does seem like power weapons respawn a lot quicker in Halo Infinite. So they're looking at reducing those respawn times as well as how many power weapons are on the map at, at once. Uh, not planned anytime soon for that update, but that is something that they're looking at. And that's all the balance for the sandbox that we're getting with the winter update and in the future. Not all of it's coming to winter update, but some stuff for the future as well. Lots and lots of changes coming. A lot. Not to, I mean, we also didn't mention in this bucket because it's been otherwhere uh, in other places, but we've got the Forge beta coming. Also with the winter update. And we've also got campaign co-op with new achievements. Which we've gone through. We have. But it's been a while since we've talked about it. And with all the hoo-ha about new exciting multiplayer stuff coming, thought it might be good to mention that. Oh, there's these other things too that we've talked about that are coming. So, yeah. Coming to a infinite near you. Anyway. Yeah. Um, looking forward to the Forge stuff. Can't wait mm -hmm. to see what the Forgers have created, what type of mini games and stuff like that. It'd be nice to have some mini games to fall back on, on game nights again, instead of just relying on big team. Talking about mini games. Have you seen the one Forger that code a 2G 2D game in Forge? Yes, I did see that. It had a Halo platform game in halo infinite playable yeah. yes yep have no idea how he did it scripting no man no clue how he did it scripting man uh, no well, i understand that <laughs> i'm sure duquesne has his racetrack maps i'm sure that's not surprising i'm sure there's lots of stuff out there i haven't seen much else other than Mostly just example maps of, of showing off cool things that you can do in Forge. Mm hmm Saw a recreation of Foundry. That looked really good. I saw a, a couple of the remakes. It was a little too shiny for Foundry, but props to the guy that did it. He did an awesome job recreating it. You can change that with lighting. It looks like he did a pretty good job of scaling it appropriately for Infinite. It's definitely bigger than original Foundry. I could definitely tell that. But it looks like it would play well. Yeah. I've seen a couple other remakes. And I know there's going to be forgers out there that will work on remaking all the previous Halo maps. Pretty much every forge that's come out, there's always been an effort to remake every single past Halo map inside of Forge. Halo CE has been the easiest to do them with. Halo 2 had some very interesting things in it, and I'm really excited about that one. I know several 
other content creator friends have mentioned like terminal mm-hmm. with the train. Yep. Well, how so, about the bridge on Sanzibar? Yeah. You know, just the interactive elements that were on Halo two maps. Yeah. So this is going to be good. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, the icebergs on H two a. There you go. And lockout the ice or stalactites. Oh, stalactites. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. Yeah. All those things to shoot down. Mm Mm-hmm. It will be very interesting. Yeah. For sure. Let's see. We've also got one last article on Waypoint. This is just a collection of all of the Lone Wolves intel. They had them in different spots throughout the Halo Waypoint website, and they've collected them all since with the close of Season 2. All those pages are going to be Removed. overwritten with the Intel drop. Yeah, so they've co-located everything for season two in this one article. So you can always go back and, and reference them. Mm-hmm. It's kind of nice having them in one place. It makes it easier to go through. Uh, for the PC gamers out there, there was a 8, 8 MD brief a couple days ago, and they had mentioned that ray tracing is coming to Halo Infinite with season three. For those with AMD graphics cards, you can actually get real-time ray tracing in Halo Infinite. And then there was a GeForce hotfix that was released yesterday for drivers that were causing some issues. So if you're having issues with NVIDIA graphics cards, uh, there's a hotfix driver that just got released yesterday. So, For you mm-hmm. audio listeners, I'm holding my hand up. Yeah. See last week's Dragon Friday. Fair enough. Literally, launch game, crash. Launch game, crash. Mm, Launch game, crash. That sucks. I made it all the way into the game once, and then crash. Oof. (laughs) Yikes. So I was on Xbox last week. (laughs) Fair enough. I I will have to make sure I apply that update. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Since we technically haven't talked about it on the podcast yet, congratulations to Optic Gaming for taking home the championship for Halo Worlds 2022. The green wall was in full effect, and their fans were always the craziest at every Halo event. But uh, good showing from Cloud9, taking second. I think a lot of folks were expecting Sentinels and Optic to be the top two. And uh, Optic steamrolled the entire weekend. Like I think they 3-0'd every series except for when Cloud9 came up from the losers bracket, and they took the first series for the Two, four to one, four to one. But then Optic just reset and just wiped them out in the finals. Wow. Yeah. Their green wall was in full effect. Did you get a chance to watch the championship game at all? No, I was busy with other things. So there was a premature celebration on the very last game. They were doing King of the Hill and Optic was winning pretty Easily hands down. They had one, already had one hill point, and they were just waiting for, or three, three hill, three, four, four hill points, sorry. Uh, and they were just waiting for the fifth one to go, either two or, two or four, one or two. And they thought they had kept Cloud9 out of it, but someone in Cloud9 snuck within like literally the last few frames before the time went into overtime. So all the lights went off, all the displays went off of champions, and People noticed that the game was still going. Even Bravo and uh, Onset were saying like, oh, they won and everything. <laughs> and then you see all of Optic sitting down about 10 seconds later. Uh, F- APG didn't even put his headset back on. They just got down <laughs> and were like finishing them off because they, they basically just needed like a second of, of hill time or it may have been strong or something. But um, yeah. There was a premature ce- celebration for about 10 to 15 seconds, and then there, there were basically two different fanfares for them winning. And I would, I, I would say Wait, tell go the game's check it out. Over. Well, it was, it, it was like the- split seconds, so... Like yeah. I said, wait till the game's over. Like, winner! Winner! Chicken dinner! Anyway. It's definitely worth the watch. Go watch the end of it. You'll you'll get a kick out of it. But again, congratulations to Optic for getting that championship, bringing the green wall back. Congrats. Yeah. 
Next piece of community stuff. Have you seen Accelerate's CPU video? I actually was watching it just before the uh, podcast. It's a very good video. I recommend people going and watching it. He does a very good job of explaining what Infinite is doing regarding CPU, how the fact that it's not a multi-threaded game, and that even though your CPU will say, hey, I've got room to spare on processing, you actually don't. Yeah. I found that out. The first week I streamed and played Infinite on a single PC, my CPU was chugging hard. Yeah. And uh, I'm not saying mine's you know, top of the line by any means, but it ain't no slouch either. Yeah. So he does a very good in-depth analysis of how Infinite uses CPU processing power and what components to buy to get certain effects, especially for the holiday season for people going out and buying new equipment, upgrading components, what's important to get. Mm -hmm. I'm definitely going to be looking at that to see if how I can optimize my gameplay experience better. It ideally coming comes down to maxing out your frame rate. Yeah. As in maxing out as in like no more than 120 frames per second. Well, that's as many as it'll allow on my system. Well, he had it at 360 because like I said, 360 hertz monitor. <laughs> like I said, on my system, 120 is the maximum maximum frame rate infinite will allow. Other games will allow a lot more. So but go check it out. So more Good CPU watch. bound than CPU bound. Yeah, Infinite is strangely very CPU bound. Mm -hmm. which, which I find odd. I do too. Especially in the age where you have 3080s and 3070s. I mean, hell, even a 2080. Or well, like, what is it computing? Because, I mean, obviously all the graphics is going to be driven off the graphics card, but what calculations is it? doing for the game where it's like that cpu heavy i know i i don't know because some i you know i i place other similar games and they don't hit the cpu that hard yeah there, there's something going on i uh, yeah there, there's definitely i think there's something wrong with the the engine it, it, it very well could be and it could be the fact that they're using I don't know the if the engine was originally designed to be console or it was designed to be both. It just favors console. But I, I you know, like I said, I, I could be speaking out my butt for all I know. There's something odd with Infinite being so CPU bound. And like frame rate should have some impact on CPU, but I wouldn't expect it to be that much. Yeah. So something's yeah, on, going on. Something's going yeah, on. Yeah, honestly, as long as the game is stable, I can play stably. It's at least 60 hertz. I'm happy. 120 is better, but 60, I can play it. I can play it very stiff. It's very stable at 60 hertz or 60 FPS, which works out great for streaming because it actually brings down the encoding lag or encoding load on my GPU to send it out to Twitch. Sure. Because it doesn't, you know, because it doesn't have to duplicate frames or anything. It's just also odd that MCC can run, like he was saying, he gets three, 360 frames out of his MCC without breaking the sweat on the CPU. Mm -hmm. And then Halo Infinite, which granted is a lot more modern game and the engine's been reworked and everything, just struggles. Like it's one thing like for graphic said. fidelity to be better, but that should ping more of a GPU than CPU. Like I said, you know, that's why I brought up when and they some were of designing the engine. the engine, did it being on PC make them change something in the base coding as opposed to MCC, which was all developed to be on console and then ported to PC? Also, all of MCC was designed to work on much, much lighter hardware. You know, like your pocket watch. <laughs> you know, your phone, your pocket watch, phone. And I, 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 I got what you meant. I got what you meant. Yeah. Uh, all right. 
we've also got Drew Valen, who did who won the most critical challenge, got partnered on Twitch. Congrats. Yeah. Big congrats. Lots of people heading his way. He's been streaming a lot lately. Mm-hmm. We've also got uh, MH Cosplay was saying that 405th is doing their 24-hour charity stream this weekend. So feel free on, and hop on over to the 405th on Twitch and check out the charity stream that they're doing. Pins kindly posted that Installation 00 has done another installment of his Halsey's Journal coverage. So thank you, Pins, for that. And... I think that's it. Lots of stuff coming for winter update. Mm-hmm. Next week is going to be crazy. And it's I'll been be a year. Work. It's been a year, but 343 is making a lot of people happy right now. Honestly, I, I, I have never been unhappy with the game. I've been frustrated with some of the glitches and issues it's had. But... All in all, I've for this year, I've when I've played it for the most part, I've had fun and I've enjoyed the experience. I think a lot of folks, I mean, especially content creators too, have really just missed content, like reasons to keep coming back and playing. And like, I, and I get that it has not had that much stuff. And when you're making your living off of Halo as a content creator, that's a problem. But they've done a great job of hunkering down, addressing a lot of the core issues, and granted, they still are struggling with hiring issues, which is unfortunate. But that's, that's not their fault. No. But most people don't care, unfortunately. Well, yeah, never mind. We don't want to get into that again. <laughs> So that's going to wrap it up for the podcast tonight. A little bit longer than we've had in the past, but we've had a lot more to talk about, which is nice. We've had something to talk about. (laughs) Yeah. It's amazing what happens when you take two weeks off. All of a sudden, all this news comes out. Right. Uh, Also had a few folks that did uh, pull me aside at Halo Worlds. Uh, Some folks that were listeners to the podcast. So for those of you that came up and talked to me and said, hey, thanks for reaching out. Hope to see you all next year. Bye. I definitely think Worlds... So, I'll say this too. I said on the last podcast when we had a recording from Worlds, but talking with Tashi and Sketch and everyone else, the idea is that Worlds becomes Halo Fest, bringing that whole kind of feel back where it's a celebration of Halo. Any Halo fan can come, but there's also this competitive event going on as well. So, I think for Halo fans this might eventually be the event to come to. You know, if they could, if they get to that point with worlds, I might think about attending it. May I, not I go think watch, it may not go watch the competitive part of it, but I may attend. The community stage was great. That's where I spent the majority of my time. It was very entertaining. If you all haven't seen the panels with Steve and Jen, when they did Mad Libs, when they did Pictionary, script reading, all that stuff, all probably the best content from that stage was when they were up there. Lots of good laughs, lots of good, just roaring from the crowd, lots of good entertainment. The VODs should be up either on Xbox, YouTube, or Halo YouTube somewhere. I think probably Xbox, YouTube. And they're just, go watch them, enjoy them. They're good. I have to admit, I like the fun they had with Jen. Um, and, um, uh... Steve? Steve. Uh, in their little shorts on the YouTube. Yeah, there's two different shorts that they did. The first one was pretty funny. The second one was hilarious. Yeah, the first one was Steve trying to find where to go, and then the second one was where Steve was talking to fans coming in. As Master Chief. And then Tasha had to come and be like, dude, really? I, I shouldn't say talking to fans. Slamming fans. <laughs> fair, fair point. Fair point. It was quite interesting. Yes, they they it's were like, good, dude. Really, they they really did a good job with the promotional material for. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, it doesn't look like Xbox actually has the videos up. I'll, I, 
I'll ask where they're putting the the links. I know they're supposed to be putting them somewhere. Um, I'm sure they'll pop up. At least Sketch mentioned that they were going to be posted somewhere. Just don't know where. They might just be in Twitch VODs, too, if you go to their Twitch channels. I'll check real quick. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in and watching. It's been a great week for Halo content. We've seen a lot of cool things get announced by 343. There's going to be a lot of cool content coming out on Tuesday with Forge. We'll see what all the Forgers have been up to and just the onslaught of new modes, maps, and everything that will be coming uh, down the pipe. I am super excited to see what we'll have. Prepare to have your mind blown. Yeah. It's going to be insane. It's going to be really good. Because they've had an undisclosed amount of time to learn the scripting. It's been a while. I'll just say that. So I, 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 I imagine they've got it pretty well figured out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for those that are in the chat, the VODs are actually available on Twitch. Uh, there is the first link and there is the second link for those in the chat. All right. Well, anything else to say there, GT? All right. All done. Well, thanks, folks, on Twitch for joining us. Prestige, Pens, Eric Yabu, Laird. Thank you all for sticking it with us tonight. For all of us downloading, for all our new listeners, whether we, uh, whether you learned about us from Worlds or we got a chance to meet up, it was fun to see you all. Can't wait to see you all next year. And for some of you, we'll see you all tomorrow for Frag and Friday. And for the rest of you, we'll see you again next week. Thank you for listening to Pod Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. You can find our podcast on your favorite podcasting service and listen to us live every Thursday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time on Twitch. Check out our website, podtackler.com, and join the community on Discord at podtackler.com slash Discord. If you want to play Halo with us, come join us for Frag and Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Become a supporter of the show by sharing the show with your friends and family. Or help keep the lights on by subscribing to us on Twitch, donating via PayPal, or becoming a patron alongside Confal, Pins Halo, and Prestige Ace. Until next time, keep on fragging trucks.